welcome to this afternoon's edition of Zoo to You at the Central Florida Zoo. We're here today with our cute porcupines, Pluto and Pancake. We're actually doing a small training session. We do training on a daily basis. It really helps our porcupines to be able to understand what we're asking of them. We can do this target training, which is what they're doing right now, touching their nose to the end of that stick, to get them lined up in a couple different positions, places on scales. If we need to see an animal's body size, we can actually ask them to line up there with that target so we can get a look at those quills. It's really important for us to get a daily look at those animals. And training is just like what you guys are doing at home right now with learning through the different things that you're doing at home. Our animals learn that way too. So they can learn all sorts of different behaviors through lining up for a voluntary vaccination because realistically no one likes to get a shot, but our guys actually line up, they get a reward for doing so and they get to go see that doctor. Or actually being able to get them to go from one spot to another. Every day we have to get our porcupines out of their den or their bedroom and to, out here on exhibit. And they're actually trained to go ahead and do that as well. Mary is actually using a bridge right here, and this is Mary and Kara, two of our keepers. If you hear that whistle sound, that's actually allowing the animal to know that they can, that they've done the right behavior and that they're gonna get a reward for doing so. So every time you hear that really high-pitched little noise, that's our keepers letting that porcupine know that was the right thing to do and that they are gonna get that piece of food reward. Today we're using chow from their diet. It's a rodent block and some grapes for them to eat. They really like those fruit items for sure. Well, our porcupines just had their birthday. They actually are both nine years old. They are twin sisters. They were born here at the zoo. They got their names Pluto and Pancake because we were going with a P theme. Their dad and mom are Peter and Petunia. <laughs> Their favorite foods. Our porcupines love grapes and bananas. They also really, really enjoy apricots. Do they shoot their quills? Our seven-year-old Elijah has asked. No, they cannot shoot their quills. Don't worry, Sarah's not in any danger with recording this video right now. Porcupine's quills are made out of keratin, just like the rhino horn you saw yesterday, and they actually shed them just like we shed hair. So we get to pick them up, but they cannot shoot them at anyone. What is their natural habitat? That's been asked by Stella. Their natural habitat is in South Africa. So they're gonna be living in the savannas, grasslands. They're gonna dig giant burrows to live underground when it's hot. They are nocturnal, so they'd be spending most of their time in those burrows during the day. And then they'd be coming out in the night to dig and find food. Susan has asked how much do they sleep? They sleep most of the day. They wanna be under their rock cave. If you come to the zoo, you'll get to see them. That's where they're gonna be under their cave sleeping, but then once it becomes dark, they're active most of the night, and we come in the next morning to put back everything that they've dug out of the exhibit. Dana has asked, do they regrow their quills if they lose them? Yes, just like we regrow our hair, they re replace those quills as they fall out. David has asked if their quills are poisonous. Their quills are not poisonous, however, because they do sleep on the dirt and on the ground, those quills get covered in a lot of different types of dirt and bacteria, so they can cause quite an infection, which is why one, they're able to actually kill lions. It's not that they're actually hunting lions, but they're actually able to kill them over time because of the infectious process after a lion tries to attack one of them or one of their offspring. Logan and Rowan have asked, what kind of enrichment toys do they have? Well, today, if you can see in their exhibit, we did not throw cardboard boxes in there. That's not garbage. We threw them in there with their diet. So they had some food hidden inside cardboard boxes and those cardboard tubes. And they had to actually rip open those tubes and boxes in order to get the diet out. They also got a whole bunch of guinea grass because it was fun for them to forage through. Andy asks, why do some porcupines have short quills and others have longer? It's really based on the type of porcupine. Those found in the old world, or the porcupines like these guys, have much longer quills and live on the ground. Where those that are new world, or found in North America and South America, have short quills, and they're more arboreal. If you could imagine climbing through the trees with these long quills would be really hard to do. Nora would like to know if they have teeth. 
And yes, they do have teeth. They're part of the rodent family, so they have those ever-growing long front teeth. So that's why in this exhibit, the bark is really chewed on. If you'd believe it, some of these branches were put in there just a day ago. They will chew off the bark in just 24 hours. How would we know if they were sick? So we watch their behavior really, really well to be able to tell if there is any change in their behavior. We watch their eyes, we watch the different ways that they are pooping and peeing to make sure that we're watching that. We also watch consumption with them. So if they're not eating really well, then we can tell there's something off. Because as you can see, they clearly love their food. So we watch for the same things that you guys watch for in, in, in yourselves and in your kids to be able to tell if there's something off with them. We can also weigh them and then they actually do line up to get injected to go to the vets. So they can actually have a voluntary exam as well that way. Do they like cold weather? These girls, would, they don't like the really cold weather, but they're okay with the temperatures that are in the 60s and probably a little bit below that. But when it gets into the 40s, we give them a heater in their den so they have access to a heated space as well. Hudson asked if they play together. Well, they are sisters, so they don't really like to share too often. However, they will definitely interact. You see a lot of grooming and they do like to sleep next to each other. Trip asked, do they have good eyesight? Well, being nocturnal, they don't have very good eyesight. They have to use their sense of smell and their ears in order to find things um, to eat and what's going on around them. If you can see one of their faces, they often have their eyes closed when they're in the sunlight. They're actually using that sense of smell to find the food. They also use the whisker-like hairs or quills that are around their face to be able to tell which way they can move left or right, just like a cat will when it's going up against something in the dark. Could you use a quill as a fountain pen? I believe you could. Can they climb from Juliana? Well, they can climb, but they're not very good at it. They would not be able to climb up a tree, uh, but they could climb up a slight incline. Somebody asked if we have any babies, but these are our babies. They're nine-year-old babies and they're sisters. What is their lifespan? Well. In a zoo setting, they can live up into their late teens. However, in their natural habitat, they would be living up to about 10. What's the most one can weigh, Izzy asked? They can actually weigh up to 60 pounds. Our girls weigh approximately 50 pounds, so they're a little bit on the smaller side. We hope you enjoyed learning about our training today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of Zoo to You.